Welcome to this presentation of Time and Attendance Clock in Hours. This presentation will show the capabilities within Time and Attendance module of Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012. Focus is around a simple clock in out scenario. An employee enters and leaves their place of work. That said, this demonstration will also show the setup of terminals and employees, how to view and enter absences, how to use an electronic time card, how to calculate and approve the time registrations that have been made up against the time profile of the worker. Finally, there was an option of bringing in those time registrations into projects, for posting into the hour journal, potentially recognizing cost and revenue uh, coming out of that time spent. In order to create a bare bone clock in out terminal, I go to Human Resources. Under Setup, Time and Attendance, Terminals, and open the Configure Registration Forms. I create a new configuration, Clock in out. I choose not to use the production areas, and I have no need for the grids in this case. A defining trigger whether this will be a bare bone meaning will it go into the and show the jobs or not is uh, whether the action pane field is empty or not. I close this form and second part I define that configuration to be used on the terminal I'm, I'm on right now. In this case this is my terminal and I pick the clock in out terminal. I could also be using this screen if I had 10, 100 terminals across the floor and be setting them up each of them with a perhaps the same or different configurations. My second part is defining how my people coming in there. What numbers use in from the system are they using? My second part is defining how my people coming in there. What numbers use in from the system are they using and whether they want to clock in with a password or not. I've set up this in setup, time and attendance, time and attendance parameters. The important fields in here are the use password and use batch ID fields. Use passwords, meaning should I, beside from entering a primary login, should I also be using some form of password. The second part is whether I should use the batch ID field on the time registration form, or I'm going to use my employee ID. In this case, I'll be using my batch ID. Finally, I've got to the more production part of this. I wish to enable one of the workers uh, that I have in my company for using time registrations or the clock-in out terminals. Let me pick Ali here and I go to the time registration tab and choose to activate uh, Ali on registration terminals. I get this dialog and I enter in the mandatory fields in this. This could be she's working in the administration calculation group default calculation, administration again, approval group, standard profile, will she be working night shift, day shift, etc. Uh, in this case I want her to work day shift. And I can set up a profile group, uh, in this case let's take a flex group. Could also enable the flex time, whether she has a flex group. You can find all, all about this in uh, more detail in the training material and I click OK for that. So, Ali, let's take a look a little bit more in the details of her. I go to the Employment tab, and on, on the time registration, I have the fields required for my uh, terminal registrations. This could be, for example, a password, if I had set up that I wanted to use the, the password. Second part, and more important, is her batch ID. Let's go for 999, very simple to remember. To remember. Um, password, if I wanted to that. And we can recognize the fields here, flex group, uh, what calculation approval groups, etc. she was working on. I could also enable her as a supervisor, especially if this was being used on a shop floor, then the supervisor options would give her additional options when using terminals. Let's keep uh, Ali as a non-supervisor. One thing I do, however, wish to set up is whether she uses uh, electronic time cards, and I can use that by enabling it, the use time card here. This will enable her to use electronic time card, for example, on the enterprise portal or the rich client. Now, Ali 
is ready, uh, she can clock in every day uh, as long as she remembers her batch ID. Now remembering the batch ID 999 might not be so hard, uh, but in other cases it might be uh, quite a bit longer. And in this case we could be using the uh, batch IDs which we provide out of the box with Dynamics AX 2012. I'll find these under HRM reports, time and sentence, barcodes, and worker ID cards. Let me pick out Ali specifically. Okay, and I have a we're going ID card for Ali. Print it out, give it to her, and she's ready to enter and leave uh, our engine stores. Uh, now, entering and leaving means uh, entering on a terminal, so an AX uh, terminal has been set up. And in order to set that up, I'll go to home, I go to time and attendance, and I open the clock in out uh, punch clock menu item. So, this that Ali will see every day. She can now use a barcode scanner, for example, and enter her 999-9999. I click in. So the first thing she sees here is her clock in time does not match her profile. As you remember, we set her up as a daily worker. It's now 241, so that means she is a little bit late. Uh, typically, she think I think that profile has been set up for something like 7 or 8 in the morning. What is the reason for, for this personal uh, lateness, that's a personal courses, and say OK to that. She's now successfully clocked in. She clicks OK to that. And she leaves the screen, she leaves the terminal, and go to her place of work. Now it's good that she did arrive uh, because the HR manager would wish to see who is working currently on the, uh, who is currently working in the company. I go to HR, and I go to increase time and attendance, and I open the attendance form use the calculation group admin, which Ali was a part of. And you can now see that, yes, Ali did clock in at 14.41. Uh, she's currently at work, so is her a number of her other workers. Now in here, uh, there is also, unfortunately, a few who hasn't shown up. So let's take Connie, for example. Connie calls in and says she's currently sick. Uh, so the HR manager wished to create an absence registration for Connie. I can do that. Uh, we plan to have it uh, for the entire day. Uh, at least her day shift is currently uh, 30 uh, from 7 to 3. I could choose to interrupt it. It means that it will continue to run until she herself clocks in uh, using one of the terminals. She also tells the reason for this. Um, this is a family leave. And I say OK to that. So let's take Ali again and decide we wish to promote her into being a supervisor. We'll go to HR worker and we'll find her details here and we enable the supervisor options. Now in supervisor options we mean we give additional possibilities when using the terminals. Now with Ali being a uh, supervisor, uh, it does give her a few extra options. So one of these options is that she can clock in uh, with supervisor rights and, and get some additional options. We can set these options up on one of the terminals that she may uh, use on the production floor, for example, or in her daily work. We set this up, change the terminal, and switch from the clock in out to the all configuration, for example. And I'll go to production control, job registration, it is in essence leading to the same form, so it's just in order for the name is, is a little bit different. I choose, for example, that this terminal is running, uh, showing all jobs on production unit one, and I open this. And I see my job registration uh, terminal clock in out. Now, Ali again clicks in with her 999. She is currently clocked in, so she will get the supervisor options in here. Uh, this could be, for example, that she might have some additional regarding job registration, she can change feedback, and one of the things is also that she can enter in attendance registrations 
um, for Connie, for example, that we did before. So we already have Connie entered in. Um, if I wish to, I could enter in Lowland uh, is being delayed as well, uh, and enter in a new absence registration for Lowland. Now let us use the uh, electronic time card functionality which we enabled for Ali, or perhaps use another word around this. So I go to Home, and I pick out my electronic time card under Common Time and Attendance Electronic Time Card. I can see Ali is enabled here. Let's take Terence in this case. So Terence was working hard last week, and we can see the clocking out registrations that he made uh, over the course of the week. He may wish now to add a little bit more detail to this, and there's perhaps something in this this is not correct. So this could fix, for example, that on Thursday uh, he clocked in uh, at 07.12, he left again at 12.15 uh, because he had a doctor appointment uh, in the afternoon. Now Terence may wish to uh, tell the company what he was working on. This could be, for example, that he was working on certain activities that could be uh, tracked on cost. So this one of these things could be a project, and we pick the project that he was working on, so the design phase of this, and what category was he working on? Uh, let's say he was uh, in the process. He did this from 0712. He's helped comfortably find the information already present in the system until 1215 when he left for the doctor. Everything looks good, and I'll transfer this data into the system. Transfer my time registration. Yes, thank you. Screen. Now the information that came out of, for example, Terence's uh, information uh, can be found under Human Resources, Time and Attendance, Approve Calculates. So I can both do a calculation based on his time profile and approval whether I uh, believe this is okay and needs to be transferred further into the system for cost and potential revenue. Let me take the approve form service and here we have Terence and let's just go back to his day and I can see his registration he clocked in at 0712 he was working uh, on a project uh, he clocked out and then he went to a doctor appointment this all looks great I'll just do a calculation against this one thing is for example I see he was 12 minutes late for his work today I go to the absence tab and enter an absence reason for that He was feeling a little bit ill that day. With the absence reason entered, uh, everything checks out, and I can also in here approve uh, his daily work. And I transferred the dates, data that I just captured in my system, both clock in, clock out time, and specifically the hours he was spending on a project has now been transferred into an hour journal. I can, for example, see the transfer registrations by going into inquiry, and I see the transfers, his absences, his clock in, his clock outs, the work he's been doing on the projects, as well as I can go into projects. So I go to the hours. I'll just take my all. Here's an interesting thing. Let's take first the direct hours that Terence made. So Terence, he worked 5.05 hours. Actually, it ended two systems in here. So take a look at this. Terence was working 5.05, so we made a me negative adjustments for that, and added the actual hours that we calculated our way to 4.55. So the difference of one a half an hour here is because Terence has been set up with a daily profile of half an hour's break, which is getting deducted into uh, projects. Thank you for your attention during this uh, demonstration. Just to quickly recap, during this presentation I went through uh, defining a new clock in out terminal. Second, I set up one of the existing workers to use the time registrations functionality. With that worker, Ali, I went in and clocked in it and entered in the, in the reason for why she was late. I went through the attendance functionality. I saw what workers were not present and I entered in an absence registration for one of the absent uh, workers. Using the functionality that comes in of the clock in, clock out terminals, 
I could use that functionality in, for example, a electronic time card, extending it with additional detail around a project I have been working on. I took the registrations being made and brought it into the calculation and approval process, where I had additional in information to enter and posted it into a project journal. There are a number of related presentations to this topic. The 246 focuses on the shop floor execution, meaning the manufacturing execution module, which is based on top of the time and attendance module. The 247 going into more detail around workers and terminals. Finally, there are two business value documents. One, the 96, is on worker time and attendance, and the 81 is around managing execution on the production shop floor. Thank you very much for your attention to this demonstration of the Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012 time and attendance module.